Needless to say, everyone was shocked by the fact that oil prices ventured into negative territory, but the mechanism itself is not difficult to understand. Oil is not gold. In other words, it isn't exactly the type of thing people can just buy and hold for reasons such as 1. You need a lot of storage capacity. 2. Its properties degrade as time passes, not exactly something people buy with the intention of passing it on to children. And 3. It was never meant to act as a store of value. The name of the game is using it productively so as to generate value. With that in mind, it should come as no surprise that in light of the quarantine measures taken in 2020, as well as the deterioration of the economic landscape for other reasons, oil ended up being used a lot less. Had this been a very short-term occurrence, enough economic actors would have been happy to buy discounted oil. But as time passed, economic activity deterioration persisted, and the storage capacity of most market participants showed its limits. As such, an economic crisis also led to logistical problems, primarily pertaining to storage in our case. Furthermore, oil is traded in a wide range of ways, including so-called futures contracts, which involve one party paying today so as to secure a certain price and picking up the oil later on. Until the futures contract in question expires, you can sell it to other parties and therefore not have to worry about picking up the oil. But what if an oil futures contract expires tomorrow and market participants know there is no demand for said oil and they would be responsible for picking it up and storing it? Needless to say, you wouldn't rush to buy that contract from its existing holder, and on the contrary, would expect to be paid for the headaches involved. And there we have it, a scenario which makes it clear why oil prices can even go negative. Simple enough?